Good morning, and welcome to Lafayette Presbyterian Church on this Lord's Day. We are glad that you are here worshiping with us today. A reminder of several things, as well as a time for us to share prayer concerns. First, the reminders, the big one being that we have lunch downstairs after church. If I have been reminded that we have lunch at noon today once, I have been reminded a hundred times. Um, last night in my house, I smelled brownies late because I have a night owl as a daughter who was cooking them, and, and I woke up to the smell of brownies, and I yelled down the steps, and I said, are those brownies? And she said, yes. I said, can I have one? She said, no. Maybe you will at noon tomorrow if you preach fast enough. I said, okay. So uh, we are hopeful that everybody will join us for a time of fellowship uh, after the service today. Uh, Prayer concerns, I did want you to know that Jeanette on Wednesday, I talked with her yesterday and it's confirmed, will have uh, her shoulder replaced. Uh, they had hoped to be able that it would heal on its own, but it is not, not cooperating, uh, so they're going to have that on Wednesday uh, morning at some time early, uh, she thinks, so prayers for her. She is going through therapy, uh, she says it hurts but she tries not to complain, uh, uh, at least to them. I think she waits and saves that for all of her visitors. So, uh, uh, but she is doing well. We miss her dearly. I hope she's able to join us and pray that she will be back with us soon uh, with us as well. Uh, note of celebration this week. Uh, my oldest graduates with her master's in some sort of a communication degree at Georgia Tech. On, I'm from Georgia State on Thursday. Uh, that means she has two degrees, but no job. If any of you would like a copy of a resume at the end of worship today, please let me know. Uh, but we are excited and look forward to celebrating that with her. Also, prayer concerns. I know Susan's brother had a rough week. Uh, I guess he is still at MD Anderson. It, 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 they're working to try to get him feeling better and back up the snub. So prayers for him as he continues to battle cancer. Are there other prayer concerns this day? Who? Uh, so prayers for Glenda that she gets back on her feet fully in the near future uh, as well. Uh, yes. Okay. So we've got, we are helping the cardiology field in order to pay for their new boats. Um, Lim is going to be seeing a cardiology appointment for a consult, and David will be having the second ablation on his heart on Tuesday, uh, and hopefully he will get completely back in rhythm, and he may do a jig for us the following Sunday. So we'll look forward to that as well. Are there other concerns or celebrations this day? Yeah. 
silent prayer request. And I'm sure there are many of those. Five, nine, six. Yellow hymnal. Sing it twice so we can get out by noon. I got gotcha. you. All right. Let us now slow our hearts and minds down as we turn to worshiping our God together in spirit and in truth. Please join me in the unison call to worship. Our good shepherd calls. He knows us each by our name. Our good shepherd leads. We are here to listen and to follow. Our good shepherd protects and provides. We give thanks and praise for our good shepherd. Please rise if you are able and sing hymn number 387, Savior Like a Shepherd. call to confession. Let us confess all that distracts and distorts God's truth so we can know grace and forgiveness through Christ. Please join in the unison prayer of confession. <clears throat> Savior God, you beckon us, but we do not heed your call. You gather us, but we wander away, losing ourselves in false and superficial comforts. You speak truth, but we fail to hear and respond. 
Good shepherd, do not give up on us. Redeem us, restore us, resurrect us for life in Christ. Please continue in silent prayers of confession. Amen. Responsive words of forgiveness. Even when we walk through the darkest valley, God is with us. God does not abandon us. Know that you are forgiven and receive Christ's peace. Alleluia. Amen. Let us pray. Savior God, we are in awe of you and the way you guide us to the greater good. You gifted us to the Holy Spirit as our advocate and guide. Open us to the Spirit's wisdom and truth. Open our ears, minds, and hearts toward your word, your word read and proclaimed today. May we know your truth and respond in faith. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes from the book of Psalm, and it's chapter 23. Hear now the word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all of the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The second scripture comes from the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 10, verses 1 through 18. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is a shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger. But they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was trying to say to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. 
I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as a father knows me and I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, I pray now that the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts here in this time, in this space, in this place, they might be acceptable in your sight, you who art our strength, our rock, and our redeemer, Christ, amen. I am continually continually amazed at the things I do not know. Now, now I know that sounds a little bit arrogant, maybe even to the point of narcissism. You think you should know everything, Clay? But, but, but I don't mean for it to. It's just that the lack of knowledge, well, it's not just that. It, it's not the lack of knowledge or, or, or the forgetting of things that I've learned that, that doesn't bother me so much. It's about all the things out there I didn't even know were things I should have learned about. I mean, in the first case, you know, there was something I studied and some, some fact has slipped my mind. You know, like how many rooms are there in the White House? I bet we've all heard it. There are 132. See, I don't feel so bad about not remembering that. Or even how many statements of the I am variety did John use in John's gospel? Do you remember? He uses those I am statements. How many of them are there? See, I don't feel so bad. There's seven. Do you remember any of them? We, we just heard two. I, I am what? The, the, the good shepherd. Come, come on, help me out here. What's another one? The, the light, light of the world. Uh, well, well, no, that was close, though, and I'm not going to tell you you're wrong. It's just not in John, because I'm smarter than tell my wife I'm wrong in church. Not a good plan. I, I, I am the gate for the sheep. We, we just heard that, the good shepherd. I am the bread of life. There we go. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, truth, and the life, and, and I am the true vine. If I was doing a sermon series, there's seven sermons right there I could knock out, but, but, but I'm not. I'm just looking at two of them today. See, it's not that I've forgotten stuff that bothers me. It's my lack of knowledge or ignorance about things that I didn't even know I could or maybe should know. I mean, I discover I didn't even know I was so ignorant about some things, and yet I realized that so many people knew it. And then upon discovering that I don't know it, I feel a little bit like an idiot. Again, it's not that I didn't remember something, but I didn't even know something existed. Now, now I guess it's true. All of us can't know everything, and I go around telling my students at school we learn something new every day. And so I know there are things that, that, that I don't know things about, and it doesn't really bother me unless it happens in public. 
when it happens in public around a whole group of people who know something and I had no clue, well, I feel a little bit uncomfortable. I mean, they try to be polite. We, we've got good people. They try to be polite. But, but, but often they look at me and I can see in their eyes they think I'm some sort of a buffoon for not knowing whatever it is. And sometimes, depending upon the, the person, they're not even so polite in sharing the fact they think I'm, I'm a buffoon. One of my remembrances of feeling like this occurred not long after I took the position here to serve this church. David, it, it's David's fault. David invited me to the Marsh House Heritage Day. It was on a Saturday. There was no Georgia Tech football at home, so I could get my priorities straight and come right on up here to see it. It was a wonderful day. I got to meet all kinds of people, learn about the history of the community, visit folks and talk. In that process, I met some really good folks, and they invited us to go out to the Walker County 4-H Agriculture Festival. Well, we were staying the night. We, we had gotten an Airbnb. We, there, there really wasn't much else to do, to be honest with you. So, so, so we went on out. Now, someone said you need to be sure to be there in time for the goat show. I thought they were pulling my leg. The goat show. I, I figured it must have been the greatest of all time. They were going to bring out a bunch of old, you know, Lafayette, Walker County football players and wave at them, get some autographs, you know, know the greatest of all time. And then they said their kid was competing in the goat show. Again, I thought they were trying to pull something over on the outsider. No, I got there. There were real live goats, lots of them. They were also showing chickens and, and cows and, and a bull, a bull that looked rather mean. And I, I know the little kids went up and petted it, but I stayed on back away. I, I just didn't have that much faith. I learned that, that these goats could be paraded around by children, and they would follow commands. Commands better than my own kids used to follow. And they showed lambs and cows. Now, I must have looked really out of place. Or maybe I was spinning in finally because I was leaning up over the, the makeshift pen. You know, they, they bring in one of these makeshift pens, and, and, and these kids were out parading goats. And, and this kid, he's he got to be about third grade. He hopped up on the railing of it next to me to look out over the goat show. He had on blue jeans. I know they were Levi's. He had on a cowboy hat. Only thing he didn't have was the wheat straw to have in his mouth. But he was there looking. He's inspecting it all. He looked over and goes, fine-looking goat. Now, I should have said nothing. But preachers have a hard time saying nothing. So I said, which, which one's the best looking of them? Looked over at me. He said, you ain't from around here, are you? I said, well, no, 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 I'm not, to be honest. I, I've never even been to to a goat show before. You ain't ever been to a goat show? I, I, I said no. That boy's young jaw dropped. He finally stammered out, well, it's that one right over there. You know, the girl that's got the, the, the blue shirt on. That's the best looking one. And then he hopped off of the railing. He walked around to the other side of the pen and hopped back on. He wasn't going to be standing next to some fool who had never been to no goat show before because it was evident that I was a complete idiot. 
At the end of the day, I was amazed once again at all I didn't know. Oh, I've got framed degrees on my office wall. They say I got a bachelor's and a master's and a a specialist. I I got some certificates I can put on my resume. but, But the truth is, Most of my expertise is fairly limited, and in many places, it doesn't exist at all. Of course, what reminded me of this incident from years back now is this text from John about the shepherds and the gate. And what occurred to me is that before I wrote this sermon, It might be a good idea to see if Jesus might be sharing some information to his listeners that this suburbanite from the 21st century didn't know or understand. Guess what? I didn't understand much at all. I mean, I got the general idea. It was about sheep, and it was about shepherds. And there was something about a gate and a pen. But I didn't comprehend the detail. I actually got pretty fascinated learning about it this week. And I know they say the devil is in the details, but, but I'm not sure that's true because I think sometimes in the details we'll discover a lot of God's love and grace if we take a minute. So here we are. We have Jesus once again talking with the the religious elite, priests, Pharisees, scribes, and, and his own band of followers. And Jesus starts talking about a sheepfold. Now, his audience would understand this, but but just so we do too, that this sheepfold would be a permanent structure. Not one of those temporary things like I was on that day, but a permanent structure made made out of rock and plaster, a full corral to, to hold the sheep in. And it would be in oftentimes attached, attached to the house. And there would be a good gate a good gate made of wood to keep the sheep safe and prevent them from escaping. Jesus said anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. Now, now that makes sense. I got that much. But then he talks about the sheep know the shepherd by his voice. Know the shepherd by his voice? Who is our Lord talking about? Oh, it must just be a metaphor. Just just a beautiful metaphor. Poetry, we can... No, it's not a metaphor. I mean, it is, but it isn't. What do I mean? Well, even to this day, Even to this day, cooperatives of shepherds, or or more likely in this day, wealthy farmers would make extra large sheepfolds. They owned the land. They would make a huge sheepfold that could be filled with hundreds, up to even thousands of sheep. These folks today, we, we, we call them ranchers. There's a Greek term that means ranchers. I'm not even going to try to, to pronounce it for you. They would build these sheepfolds, and, and they'd allow several shepherds to place their flocks in there for a fee. I got a small group of sheep. You got a small group of sheep. My, my friend John's got a small group of sheep, and, and Richard owns all the land, and, and he lets us use that, that sheepfold of his, and, and he charges us a fee. He's a good guy, isn't he? thing is that the sheep, the sheep weren't marked. They, 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 they didn't have no, no bell around their neck or, 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 or any kind of ribbon because sheep would eat them all away. They, they didn't brand them like cattle. So who knew which sheep was whose? Well, the sheep, the sheep learned their shepherd's voice and could hear them even upon the noise that was around the sheepfold. Even if more than one shepherd was calling, they 
they would go to the shepherd whose voice they had been raised with and knew. Now, I've never witnessed this in person, but my friend Roger Nishioka, who was a professor at Columbia Theological Seminary before going to serve a church in Kansas, once witnessed this scene in modern day. He, he was a guest lecturer at, a, at a, a seminary in Lebanon, and his host took him out to see this in action. He, he tells the story better than I do, but Roger was not available to fly into Lafayette this morning, so you get me. He says, as the scene unfolded, he saw there were five teenagers standing just beyond the opening of the gate. Three boys, two girls. The owner opened the gate to the corral, and the shepherd started calling. Roger turned to his friend, and he asked him, what are they singing? He explained they weren't singing. They were calling the sheep by name in Arabic. As each shepherd was calling, sheep started to come out of the sheepfold in line, and each shepherd would start to back away from the gate, and the sheep would follow. Roger said it sounded beautiful. Arabic is a melodic language. It reminded him of the Adan, the call to Muslim prayer. Friends, Jesus said the shepherd goes ahead of them, and the sheep will, call, will follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of the stranger. One of those things. I didn't know a sheep could be called like a pet or a child. In fact, if you look at it on YouTube, the sheep come far better than my children ever did, unless I said I had money. Of course, to know the voice of the shepherd, you have to spend time with that shepherd learning it. And to know the voice, you spend time through things like prayer, and study, through worship and song, through spiritual practices and stewardship. You learn it in, in, in sharing your time and resources and your stories with one another and the world. It's an intentional investment of our greatest resource and the one thing we can never get back, our time. But that resource allows us to learn the shepherd's voice and can keep those seeds, those seeds from healing our joy and our hope and our abundant life. Oh, those voices are out there. They, they lie to us about the scarcity of the world, and they lie and say that you are not loved by the shepherd unless you believe this or that. They lie and they create fears and the walls that go up around those fears when our Christ came as a bridge to connect us to one another and our creator. And then I wanted to think maybe I should stop the scripture right there and say amen. Because the other thing that, that I was going to struggle with, I could see it coming, was, was this thing about the gate. I wasn't sure what the gate meant. Now, now I assumed, I assumed in my 21st century view, when, when Jesus says, I am the gate, that, that he was like the gatekeeper at a fancy neighborhood. I, I had in-laws that lived in a fancy neighborhood like that. You, you, you'd have to drive up to the gatekeeper and tell your business and why you were there. And, and, and if you met the criteria, they would open the gate and let you in. And, and if you didn't, if you were riffraff, in other words, if it was just me without my wife, they, they turned me around. I've heard that sermon, by the way. It fits really well with our modern view of meritocracy, right? You, you, you got to earn your way into heaven. To get through the gate, you, you need to do this or believe that. The gate only opens if you vote the way we vote or get baptized just the way we say you ought to get baptized. And the list goes on. Frankly, that viewpoint made me uncomfortable. Because it seems to go against much of what Jesus says in 
his teaching in truth. However, however, thanks be to God, I was completely wrong about this gate stuff. Jesus, Jesus was talking to people and talking about sheep, and he was doing it in the first century. And here is what his audience would have understood that that at least I didn't, and I bet many of you don't yet as well. When Jesus says he is the gate, he literally means it. He literally means he is the gate. You see, as I read about first century shepherding, here's something I learned from the scholars. As some of the scholars write, in Jesus' time, to lead their sheep to good pasture, shepherds, shepherds would often walk for miles a day. They would have to prod the sheep along, sometimes as they walked so far to find food that they wouldn't be able to get back to that permanent sheepfold at night. And there are no sheep hotels along the road. So the shepherd, the shepherd would create a temporary sheepfold. The shepherd would go and and he'd cut down branches from trees and he'd gather sticker bushes and, and he'd arrange them in a large circle, leaving a gate area for the, the sheep to go on in for the night. And then the shepherd, then the shepherd would lie down in the gate. He would lie down and literally become the gate to protect the flock. Anyone who wanted to steal the sheep, they had to get through him. If a predator came along who wanted to hurt the sheep, they had to get through the shepherd. That's why Jesus said, I came as the gate and I came that they may have life and life abundantly. John's gospel declares, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Now the hired hand, the hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, he sees the wolf coming and he's got better places to be. He doesn't stay there. But I, Shepherd, I know my own, they know me, just as the Father knows me, I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. You see, the beauty and the power of the statement, Jesus says, I'm the shepherd, I'm the gate for the sheep. Jesus says, God. God is not an absentee owner. God didn't put us here, hit the spin button on the earth, and leave us. No, God is active with us in our world. In fact, by God's grace and love, Christ laid down his life to protect us, that we might not have just life, but life abundant. And like a good shepherd or a loving parent, our God knows us, and even in our imperfection claims us as God's own. And what I do know, at least if I understand the text and the life of Christ, is while this shepherd stuff is metaphor, friends, it is also Christ came, and he became the gate that keeps death out, and the powers of evil cannot overcome his love. Because of Christ, we need not live in fear, for Jesus laid down his life so that we can live with joy. Because of the good shepherd, we can live, and live not just to survive, but to thrive. Friends, that is what abundant life is all about. It's about living in joy, knowing that Christ is our protector and our Savior, and the very gate that keeps us in the fold. It allows us to live with joy and hope 
and recognize the beauty of this world. Friends, God calls you and I by name and promises to be with us even when the days are hard. But even when the days are hard, hold on to that promise. Christ as the good shepherd, he can provide power and love and mercy and grace show up and believe it, even when sorrow seems to have won the day. My grandmother, Louise Redaway Burton, died on us. She was my last living grandparent. After her husband died, I made a promise to him that I would take care of her on his deathbed, and so I did the best I could. Every night for years at 10 o'clock, I called her. Wouldn't go to bed if I didn't call her. I called her from cruise ship at 10 o'clock. If I fell asleep on the sofa because of a long day, my children knew to keep me out of trouble, they would pick up the phone and call her. There's still days at, at 10 o'clock at night when I look over and think, I miss making that phone call. The last days of her life were not easy. She was confused and tired, withering away as death was coming. She kept knowing us, but, but some days I wondered. Some days I wondered if she even knew where she was. For those of you who have been through that experience, you know how hard that is. We try to find ways to offer comfort. And when we couldn't have conversation towards the end, I sometimes sat there and would read, read scripture or just hold her hand. And, and to be honest, there were days I just didn't know if she was even there or was doing any good. And one day, just a few days before she passed, I was holding her hand. Come to the garden alone, while the dew is still on the road. We got to that chorus, walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. Sounds sweet. He knew that she was in or in death and he could separate her from the love. He knew that she had to get her even out of the shadow of death. God was with her and by her witness to me and in the valley of the shadow of death. I, who is a shepherd for us. Hallelujah. Good and gracious God. Do believe. Help our unbelief. In Christ. Amen. Friends, having heard the good news and the good news proclaimed, let us confess that which we believe using the Apostles' Creed found on the inside cover of your hymnal. 
As you are able, please stand in body or in spirit as we say that which we believe together. Friends, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Our God provides for us as shepherd. Our God provides for us as a shepherd provides for his sheep. Let us return a portion of all we have been given in gratitude for God's generosity.
Will you join me in the unison prayer of dedication found in your bulletin? Let us pray. Risen and redeeming God, you have given us more than we could ever give you in return. You meet our needs and transform us for service. Accept these gifts as tokens of our gratitude and bless Christ's ministry with these offerings. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. Holy God, we pray in ever widening circles, extending the love we feel for those closest to us out into our communities, our nation, and our whole world. Through our prayers, stretch us to make a place in our hearts for those we do not know, but who are known by you. We pray for those we know best, friends, families, neighbors, coworkers, all whose joys and troubles affect us daily. We pray for those we see but do not know, those who cross our paths on the road or in the grocery store or the restaurant, those who are our neighbors but whose inner lives remain a mystery to us. We ask that your spirit dwell in our community, turning strangers into neighbors, giving people purpose and compassion. Help us to see past polite fictions to those who are hungry scared or lonely, and in seeing them, love them. We pray for those we see only in the media, siblings around the world whose stories get sold to us as the news of the day. Help us to see humanity behind <coughs> the pixels and sound bites. We pray especially for those caught in cycles of violence and war, oppression and economic scarcity, persecution because of their religion, ethnicity, or gender, all those who do not know what is to be valued and cherished. Help us to feel the ties that bind all your children together to love as radically as you do. We pray for those we do not see, the millions whose stories go untold, whose lives feel so far removed from our own. We pray for your people in every place and ask that you keep reminding us that no one is beyond your reach. Keep us ever hungry to know your people not as curiosities, but as siblings in Christ. Expand our hearts, God, until we can hold your people inside them, all your people all over the world, following the example of our Lord Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 379, On Christ the Solid Rock I Stand. Stand as you're able and let's sing together.
when I said in the sermon there were lots of things that I did not know, I could see in some of your eyes a mental list of things that you were creating, more in my wife and daughters than some of you, but many of you of the things you didn't know, including the fact that you didn't know if I could get you out of here by noon. Well, I did. And here's the other thing I know. God loves. Knowing that, go out into the world and have courage. Hold fast to what is good. Return no one evil for evil, but strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering and honor all people. Love and serve the Lord your God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace both this day and forevermore in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you.